This lesson deals with the subject of the visual flight rules. The visual flight rules, commonly referred to as VFR, are a set of rules which apply to aircraft flight where the pilot is able, at all times, to maintain separation from other aircraft and from terrain by reference to features outside the cockpit. Consequently, VFR flight is permitted only when visibility and separation from cloud meet certain defined minima, which you will learn about later. VFR flight then is not permitted when the minimum required visibility and separation from cloud are not present. In order that you may clearly understand what VFR flight is, it is first of all of some importance that you should be able to distinguish between the two quite different concepts of the visual flight rules, that's VFR, and visual meteorological conditions, most commonly referred to as VMC. Many students confuse VFR with VMC. As student professional pilots, it is important that you do not. Visual meteorological conditions, or VMC, are meteorological conditions expressed in terms of visibility and vertical and horizontal distance from clouds and cloud ceiling, which are equal to or better than specified minima. These VMC minima depend on the class of airspace an aircraft is flying in and the aircraft's altitude or flight level. Illustrated on screen here are the IKO VMC minima in controlled airspace. When VMC minima are not reached, instrument meteorological conditions, or IMC, are said to prevail. You will learn more about VMC and IMC later on in this lesson. For the moment, just make sure that you remember the following important point. For flight in accordance with the visual flight rules to be permitted, visual meteorological conditions must prevail. But, in addition, the pilot must comply with the provisions of Chapter 4 of Annex 2, which deal with types of airspace, altitudes, speeds, etc. To sum up then, VFR flight must take place in VMC. But the fact that VMC prevails is not in itself sufficient for flight to be permitted in accordance with the visual flight rules. VFR as the constituent words visual flight rules make clear, is a set of rules governing the conduct of a flight. Whereas VMC, visual meteorological conditions, again as the constituent words make clear, are minimum conditions of in-flight visibility and the separation of an aircraft from cloud both horizontally and vertically. For instance, a pilot may be flying at an altitude between 3,000 and 10,000 feet above mean sea level on a beautiful summer's day with limitless visibility, a day which a typical aviator would identify as a day on which visual meteorological conditions obviously prevail. Well, as you will learn later in this lesson, VMC does indeed prevail as long as the pilot does not approach too close to the clouds. If, on this very same beautiful summer's day, the pilot does approach closer to the clouds than the VMC minima prescribe, he will no longer be in VMC, and flight in accordance with the visual flight rules will be illegal. In these sub-VMC conditions, the pilot will be in instrument meteorological conditions and be obliged to continue his flight, if qualified to do so, under the instrument flight rules. The light blue area on screen here delineates the area of sky a pilot must fly in when between 3,000 feet and 10,000 feet above mean sea level in order to remain in visual meteorological conditions. Do not concern yourself for the moment with the actual distances from cloud that the pilot is required to maintain. You'll learn about those later in this lesson. At present, you just need to know that if a pilot were to fly outside 
the light blue area, he would be closer to cloud than the VMC minima prescribe and would therefore be in instrument meteorological conditions in which VFR flight is not permitted. VFR flight is permitted in uncontrolled and in controlled airspace, except in Class A airspace. In the United Kingdom, the London Heathrow Control Zone and Terminal Maneuvering Area are both Class A airspace, as are all United Kingdom airways. VFR flight in controlled airspace will, on most occasions, except in Class E airspace, be under air traffic control, although often the separation of VFR flights from other flights is not provided by air traffic control, the ATC service being confined to the provision of traffic information. The majority of VFR flights outside controlled airspace take place without any contact with air traffic controllers. Under the visual flight rules, pilots are themselves responsible for their own separation from other aircraft on the principle of see and be seen. Pilots flying VFR are also responsible for their own separation from the ground. Before passing on to the visual flight rules themselves, let's take a closer look at VMC minima. The visual meteorological conditions minima that we will be examining in this course are those laid down by IKO. The VMC minima in the airspace over individual nations may be very slightly modified from the IKO standards, but there should not be any significant difference. In any case, in the JAA ATPL examination, you will be examined on the IKO figures. Here are the VMC minima for controlled airspace. That's airspace of classes A, B, C, D, and E. Classes of airspace are covered in a separate lesson. Above 10,000 feet, or above flight level 100, if the transition altitude is below 10,000 feet, VMC minima in controlled airspace require the pilot to have an in-flight visibility of at least 8 kilometers and to be able to maintain vertical separation from cloud of at least 1,000 feet and horizontal separation from cloud of at least 1,500 meters. Use your pause button if you wish to remain on this frame. Below 10,000 feet or below flight level 100 if the transition altitude is lower than 10,000 feet, VMC minima in controlled airspace require the pilot to have an in-flight visibility of at least 5 kilometers and to be able to maintain vertical separation from cloud of at least 1,000 feet and horizontal separation from cloud of at least 1,500 meters. Here are the VMC minima for uncontrolled airspace. That's airspace of classes F and G. Classes of airspace are covered in a separate lesson. Above 10,000 feet or above flight level 100, if the transition altitude is below 10,000 feet, VMC minima in uncontrolled airspace require the pilot to have an in-flight visibility of at least 8 kilometers and to be able to maintain vertical separation from cloud of at least 1,000 feet and horizontal separation from cloud of at least 1,500 meters. You will notice that these VMC minima above 10,000 feet or above flight level 100 in uncontrolled airspace are the same as for the VMC minima in controlled airspace above that level. Use your pause button if you wish to remain on this frame. The next level we must consider in uncontrolled airspace is that below 10,000 feet, or flight level 100, but above 3,000 feet, measured with respect to mean sea level. In this level band, VMC minima in uncontrolled airspace require the pilot to have an in-flight visibility of at least 5 kilometers and to be able to maintain vertical separation from cloud of at least 1,000 feet,
and horizontal separation from cloud of at least 1,500 meters. Again, use your pause button if you wish to remain on this frame. Finally, in uncontrolled airspace, we must look at the airspace from the surface up to 3,000 feet above mean sea level, or up to 1,000 feet above terrain, whichever is the higher. In this lower band of airspace, a pilot is flying in VMC if he is clear of cloud, in sight of the surface, and has an in-flight visibility of 5 kilometers. In some ICAO signatory states, the in-flight visibility required for VMC to prevail in this lower band of airspace may be reduced to below 5 kilometers by the National Aviation Authority if an aircraft's airspeed does not exceed a given maximum value. For instance, in the United Kingdom, for aircraft flying at less than 140 knots, VMC minima require a pilot to have a forward visibility of only 1,500 meters. Even here, though, pilots must be aware of the restrictions attached to basic licenses. For example, in the United Kingdom, no holder of a basic private pilot's license who does not also possess an instrument qualification may fly at all if the forward visibility is less than 3 kilometers. So in the UK, the restrictions of a basic private pilot's license do not allow a light aircraft pilot to fly in VMC minima. You may wish to spend a few moments pondering over this apparent paradox. Now let us look at the visual flight rules themselves. They are contained in Chapter 4 of IKO Annex 2. Here's the actual page from Annex 2 on which the VFR rules are contained. If you wish, you may scroll through the page to look at the rules yourself. But if you are referring to the visual flight rules for operational purposes, or before taking an examination, make sure that you consult the latest edition of Annex 2. The first and most fundamental VFR rule is the one that you have already learnt. That is, that VFR flights must be conducted so that the aircraft is flown in conditions of visibility and distance from clouds equal to or greater than VMC. The picture on screen depicts visual meteorological conditions in uncontrolled airspace above 3,000 feet but below 10,000 feet or flight level 100 if the transition altitude is lower than 10,000 feet. The details of this rule have already been covered in this lesson. This image depicts VMC for all of uncontrolled airspace. Here are the VMC minima again, this time for controlled airspace. Remember that no VFR flight is permitted in Class A airspace, such as the London Heathrow Control Zone, or in any United Kingdom airway. In certain circumstances, for flight in aerodrome control zones, a special VFR clearance may be obtained from air traffic control, which permits a non-instrument qualified pilot to fly in the control zone in lower than normal VMC minima. You will learn about special VFR flight in a later lesson. Now let us look at the rules covering the VMC minima requirement for VFR flight in control zones. Unless special clearance is obtained, flights operating in accordance with the visual flight rules are not permitted to take off or land or operate within the air traffic zone of an aerodrome with a control zone when meteorological conditions are below specified minima. Those weather minima stipulate that the cloud ceiling must not be less 
than 1,500 feet, and the ground visibility must not be less than 5 kilometers. There are different rules in different nations covering VFR flight at night. The actual definition of night also varies from nation to nation. The International Civil Aviation Organization defines night as the period from the end of evening civil twilight to the beginning of morning civil twilight. Civil twilight is defined as the period between sunset or sunrise, and the time when the center of the sun's disk is six degrees below the horizon. As far as VFR flight at night is concerned, ICAO rules of the air state simply that VFR flights at night may be permitted as laid down by the appropriate National Aviation Authority. For example, the United Kingdom defines night as stretching from 30 minutes after sunset to 30 minutes before sunrise. And in the United Kingdom, VFR flight at night is not permitted. All night flying in the United Kingdom must therefore be conducted in accordance with the instrument flight rules. Although pilots do not need to possess an instrument rating to fly at night in the United Kingdom, they must, however, hold a night qualification. Let's now look at how altitude or flight level affects the right to fly in accordance with the visual flight rules. Unless authorized by the appropriate Air Traffic Services Authority, VFR flights are not to take place above flight level 200. Incidentally, VFR flight may not be conducted at transonic or supersonic speeds at any level or altitude. Authorization will on no account be given for VFR flights to operate above flight level 290 in areas where a vertical separation minimum of 1,000 feet or 300 meters is in effect above that flight level. We'll now take a look at the VFR low flying rule. Except where necessary for takeoff or landing, or except by permission from the appropriate Air Traffic Services Authority, an aircraft is not to operate in accordance with the visual flight rules at a height of less than 1,000 feet, that's 300 meters, above the highest obstacle within a radius of 600 meters from the aircraft. Neither may an aircraft operating VFR fly at less than 1,000 feet over settlements, towns, cities, or other congested areas, or at less than 1,000 feet over an open-air assembly of persons. Never forget, though, that adherence to the VFR low-flying rule does not absolve a pilot from the absolute minimum height rule, which requires the pilot, unless he is landing or taking off, never to fly below a height from which he can safely land his aircraft in the event of an emergency without causing undue hazard to persons or property on the ground. Elsewhere than over congested areas or open-air assemblies of persons, a VFR flight is not to operate at a height of less than 500 feet, that's 150 meters, above the ground or water. Now we'll look at the IKO rule regarding VFR cruising flight levels. Except where otherwise authorized by an air traffic services authority, IKO rules of the air require that aircraft in level cruising flight higher than 3,000 feet above the ground or water, which are operating in accordance with the visual flight rules, to keep to specified flight levels dependent on their magnetic track.
the relationship between available VFR flight levels and magnetic track is governed by what is called the semicircular rule, so called because the assigned flight levels distinguish between aircraft flying on magnetic tracks between 0 and 179 degrees and those on magnetic tracks of between 180 and 359 degrees. You can see on screen here the principle of the semicircular rule for VFR flight. Here the rule is expressed in the form of a table. Notice that IKO assigns separate flight levels to VFR and IFR flights within the semicircular principle. Some states, such as the United Kingdom, do not apply the IKO semicircular rule outside controlled airspace. For instance, in uncontrolled airspace in the United Kingdom, IFR traffic in level cruising flight above the transition altitude operate in accordance with the quadrantal rule depicted on screen here. VFR traffic in the United Kingdom are not obliged to keep to this rule though they are recommended to do so. However, the semicircular rule does apply in the United Kingdom to IFR traffic above the transition altitude in controlled airspace, unless air traffic control instructs otherwise. In the JAA ATPL air law examination, you will be tested on the IKO rule only. VFR flight in controlled airspace is also covered by the rules of the air. VFR flights operating within airspace classes B, C and D, which will normally comprise control zones and control areas, when forming part of aerodrome traffic or operating as special VFR flights, must operate in accordance with the air traffic control requirements detailed in the rule of the air known as Rule 3.6. Rule 3.6 provisions basically stipulate that the VFR flight must obtain an air traffic control clearance and maintain a continuous air ground voice communication watch on the appropriate communication channel. A VFR flight operating along advisory routes or across international borders or along other routes designated by the appropriate Air Traffic Services Authority must also maintain a continuous air ground voice communication watch on the appropriate communication channel and report its position as necessary. If an instrument qualified pilot is flying in accordance with the visual flight rules in uncontrolled airspace and the weather deteriorates from visual meteorological conditions to instrument meteorological conditions, the pilot must continue the flight by switching to the instrument flight rules. You will learn what those rules are in the next lesson. Note that a non-instrument qualified pilot must at all times remain in visual meteorological conditions. However, if an appropriately qualified pilot wishes to or is obliged to change from the visual flight rules to the instrument flight rules, he must take the following action. If a flight plan has been submitted, the pilot must communicate to the appropriate air traffic services unit the necessary changes to be affected to his current VFR flight plan. The pilot of an aircraft receiving an air traffic control service who changes from the visual flight rules to the instrument flight rules, must submit by radio his modified flight plan to the appropriate air traffic services unit. And, if in controlled airspace, be sure to obtain a clearance prior to proceeding in accordance with the instrument flight rules. It is appropriate at this point to consider the rules of the air which govern flight 
in the proximity of aerodromes. The pilot of an aircraft operating at or in the vicinity of an aerodrome, whether or not he is within the aerodrome traffic zone itself, is required to conform with several rules. He must observe other aerodrome traffic for the purpose of avoiding collision. He must conform with or avoid the pattern of traffic formed by other aircraft operating at the aerodrome. He must make all turns to the left when approaching for a landing and after taking off unless a right-hand circuit pattern is in force or unless otherwise instructed. He must land and take off into the wind unless safety, the runway configuration or air traffic considerations determine that a different direction is preferable. That completes the lesson on the visual flight rules. As a final reminder, take care not to confuse visual flight rules with visual meteorological conditions. VFR is a set of rules, whereas VMC describes meteorological conditions defined in terms of visibility and distance from cloud. Flights in accordance with the visual flight rules must be conducted in visual meteorological conditions. However, flights conducted in accordance with the instrument flight rules are very often also conducted in visual meteorological conditions. Instrument flight rules are, like the visual flight rules, rules governing the conduct of an aircraft in flight. You will learn about the instrument flight rules in the next